Later that day, Winston Thomas and Edward were heading straight for Knapford, where Sir Topham Hatt was waiting for them. Thomas felt rather insecure and shy about the whole thing. After all, he wasn't the engine that Sir Topham Hatt had ordered. He wondered if he was going to send him away to scrap. The engines then met a stout gentleman walking towards them. Ah, oh, Winston, I see you brought my t one of my two new engines. Hmm, the FRK2 class looks all right, but my tank engine looks strange. He was much smaller, and he had more wheels. Was this some sort of mix-up? He asks. Actually, sir, everything was in order until the World War. The engine that you previously purchased perished in an accident. I hope it's alright that I took his place. He said that I would be safe here. It, it was the middle of the World War, and I didn't have a choice, said Thomas sheepishly. Hmm, said Sir Topham Hatt. Um, is, do you, were you assigned to any other railway, Thomas? He asked. Thomas looked even sadder than before. Uh, no, sir, none that I could think of, he said. He looked like he was about to cry. Hmm. I see, said Sir Topham Hatt. Hmm, but then again, someone might be looking for you. He swung around. He was thinking. Oh, what should I do, he said to himself. He swung around again. Edward, as much as I admire your kindness of helping him out, however, I do not admire your quickness just to bring anyone on this railway. They had to have been ordered. What if someone's looking for him? Do you know how much paperwork this would cause? You could have at least asked if he was on another railway. Edward's face fell immediately. But sir, I did ask if he was going anywhere. He said that he was stuck on the siding, heading for here. How dare you back talk me? You should be ashamed of yourself. I am your superior. I am your controller. You do as I say when I say it. Do you understand? Thundered the controller. Edward was taken aback. Winston and Thomas were shocked too, but said nothing. Um, with all due respect, said Edward, he began to get cross now. I did ask for permission. He said he was heading here, so I helped him. What's disrespectful about that? He thundered. Uh, just let it go, Edward, said Winston, calmly. He felt annoyed too, but he didn't want himself or Edward to end up on the scrap heap because he yelled at the fat controller. The controller was shocked. He didn't know that engines could be so rude. That's it. I'm sending both of you to the scrap heap. Tank engine back there and K2, you're off. You're both being scrapped. Go now. The engines were aghast. Edward finally lost his temper. He was furious. You're sending me to the scrap for helping out my fellow engine? You are no controller. You're just a tyrannical spoiled brat. He thundered. Winston was shocked. No one yet on Sodor had yelled at the fat controller and insulted him. The controller finally lost it. That's it. You're going to make excellent scrap iron. You're going to make me a nice, beautiful Iron Man suit, which is technically not canon since Iron Man the movie has not come out yet. This is 1915, gosh darn it. Edward was now furious. Winston began to get cross, too. Uh, sir, w Edward didn't really do anything wrong by helping out Thomas. Uh, he was looking out for a fellow engine and helping him to their destination. I didn't do anything wrong, snapped Edward. 
This is unfair. Unfair? I'll tell you what's not fair. That I'm still looking at you and I don't have an Iron Man costume now. Which is again, not canon. He didn't actually say this. This is just a joke, people. Don't take this seriously. Edward and Eagle tried to reason with the controller, but it was no good. Until they heard a very loud, a very deep, and a very grim, What is going on here? Everyone stopped suddenly, for there staring at them was Sir Topham Hatt. Topham! What are you doing here? I was watching the railway like you told me to. <laughs> I said to watch it, not to run it down into a smelting pile of ash. What are you doing impersonating me? You can't do that. You're not supposed to do that. Why? Because it's not fair. You have so many railways and I don't even have one. It's not fair. I want one. I want my own engines and I want my own passengers. I deserve it. I'm just as important as you. Then why don't you act like it, Lohom? At that moment, Lohom had finally lost it. He went straight to Edward and punched his buffer. <laughs> Ow, said Edward. What a plain scoundrel. He grunted. Now that that um, CGI Monsters of Terrorists is gone, now I can get on to what's important. Thomas, you weren't the engine that I ordered, so I cannot exactly buy you, because it said that you were supposed to be alone so for I another So I suppose railway. all I can really do is give you a trial. A trial, sir? Yes, a trial. I will contact your railway and see if it's okay with them. I mean, in case if we do something too hasty. Oh, thank you, sir. You know? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, hold on, Thomas. Before you get too excited, let me tell you the jobs that you three have to do. Eagle, you will be taking the express as usual. Edward, you will work with the, the Wellsworth and Suttery tank engines. We will be pulling the normal passenger trains. And Thomas? You will be the station pilot. What's a station pilot, sir? A station pilot is an engine that fetches the coaches for the other engines to take out on long journeys. And then when trains come in and the people have gotten out, your job is to pull away the empty coaches so that the big engines can go and rest. Oh, that sounds exquisite. It is, it's a very important job. No one will, no one works as hard as you. I mean, well, at least will work hard like you. Fetching coaches is a big job and responsibility. I shall do it well, sir, said Thomas proudly. Tank engines that were borrowed from other various railways were came and went, but Thomas always outlasted them all. Not much happened. Well, except for the fact that Thomas and Edward in 1921 were officially bought by the NWR, having a livery of their choice. Much to their pleasure. But around 1921, the exact same year, Winston began to get tired of pulling the express. So Sir Topham had took him off it for a while and gave him lighter work like goods or, or freight. But then he soon returned later. But little did any of the engines on Soro know that they were just about to get the number three.